Good afternoon, everybody. This is Tara, and I'm coming to you live from the Core at Law in Quintana. For those of you that are joining us via live stream, hopefully you're looking for our lecture today with um, Catherine and Sam from the Tucson Orthopedic Institute. You may recognize our presenters from about five or six weeks ago. They were here uh, talking to you guys about different core and strength exercises for the back. And a lot of you said, hey, we would love for you to come back and talk about balance and fall prevention and what we can do to improve those things um, when it comes to staying upright. And if we do happen to fall, how we can even do that correctly. So these ladies went back, they put together some great content for you today to talk about balance and fall prevention and what you can do to keep yourselves healthy, upright, and know where to go if in the chance something does happen and you need to see a doctor. So for those of you that are watching online, a few key things before we get started. I just wanna remind you that if you have any questions, you can type those into the comments section. I have a teammate here that'll relay those questions to our presenter and we'll get those answered at the end of the talk for you. But any chance you have any audio or visual issues with your speed, please let us know. And we have somebody here that can try and troubleshoot that if we can make that happen. Otherwise, we hope you enjoyed this lecture. It will be on our YouTube channel upon completion today. You may hear some questions from our live in studio audience that is directly behind the camera we're talking to, but we'll make sure that we get those questions answered so you can hear the answers and see the demonstrations as well. So thank you for joining us. We hope you enjoy the talk and Sam and Catherine, why don't you come on up? All right, hello, my name is Catherine Berry. Um, I'm gonna be kind of presenting this topic for you today. I also have Samantha. And I'll just be demonstrating what she's presenting. So just a really quick background about me. Um, I have my BS in neuroscience from U of A. And then I also just completed my doctorate program for physical therapy from NAU. <laughs> Thank you so much. So yeah, I'm, I'm honored to be invited back to talk to you guys. And so today, just to quickly go over things, we're going to talk about sort of screening for fall risk talking about balance strategies you might use, three systems that are involved with balance, uh, how to fall safely, how to get back up from a fall, and then we're gonna kind of have those demos more towards the end, so we sort of have all that safety foundation laid uh, for the demos. And then at the end, kind of a quick talk a little bit about assistive devices. And just a quick disclaimer, if you have any sort of specific concerns or you know, dizziness or balance that, you know, maybe there's a medical component there. We definitely want you to just be taking this as a very general guide. And for more specific things, please um, you know, see your primary care provider or a licensed physical therapist to work with you on that. Um, sometimes dizziness can be as simple as, you know, you're just dehydrated. Sometimes it can be a symptom of a medication. So we just want to make sure we're kind of getting the full picture of what's going on. And so here we're taking a look at a diagram uh, that's looking at gait speed. So that's just how fast we walk or how quickly we walk. Um, and so science is kind of looking at this now as the sixth vital sign. It has you know, that much to do with our overall health. Um, it's a really good indicator if you're sort of on one spectrum or the other about how independently you might live in your community, uh, your risks that you might have for fall or you know, hospitalization. Um, and so we can sort of see this bar in the middle where if you're at, you know, one meter per second or more for your gait speed, that's, you're in a good zone there. It's when we're kind of less than that, that we start to think, well, we need to work on some interventions here. Um, and if you want to kind of test that yourself, um, you could do a 10 meter walk test. So with that, you sort of have a, a two meter acceleration zone, if you will. Once you pass that two meters, the timer starts. You have a 10 meter zone where you're timed. And then when you cross that, then the timer stops and you have a two meter deceleration zone. So that can give you a snapshot of where you're at with that 10 meters, how quickly you're walking. And then you can kind of gauge where you fall on this bar. And that's something we do in the clinic too to sort of get that snapshot. Another great one to screen is the 30 second sit to stand test. This is a wonderful test to kind of look at balance some functional strength and mobility. Um, sounds simple, it's basically what the name says. In 30 seconds, you're gonna be sitting to stand as many times as you can um, while maintaining safety. Uh, trying not to use your arms to push off for you, so keeping them crossed in front of your chest. 
and we want you to stand up completely and sit down completely each time. And so there are some normative values um, there for women or men in your age group. So kind of where you should be at. And here are some strategies that people may use when they're losing their balance. So I'll have Sam sort of come in front for you guys. And I'm gonna step in front as well and sort of give her a little perturbation or a nudge to demonstrate when you might use these strategies. So for our first one, we've got an ankle strategy. So that's kind of, you know, a mild perturbation. Something that's throwing you off your balance just, you know, a little bit. A little step forward from that sort of a moderate perturbation is gonna be that hip strategy. And then a maximum perturbation, she has to take the step to actually regain her center of balance. Um, there's also uh, grasping strategies. So those are kind of our couch surfers who they, they kind of hold onto the wall or a couch to, to keep themselves from falling over. Um, so those are things that we can sort of work on and we're gonna look at that more throughout the presentation, how you can um, incorporate these strategies into improving your balance. And then here we're looking at the three systems that feed into balance. So we have our visual system, our proprioceptive system, and our vestibular system. And each one of these is incredibly complicated, could be a whole lecture on their own, so I'm just gonna kind of synthesize it down. Vision as you know, we take in things from our environment, so if our eyes are open or closed, that can, um, be a balance challenge. So with any of the exercises we're going to show you, if you're having an easy time with it, you know, your eyes are open, um, tr you can make it harder by closing your eyes and then seeing where the balance is at that point. Um, another way to challenge uh, is working on your proprioceptive system. So standing on a nice, solid, even surface, you know, hopefully that's not too much of an issue. Um, if that's going great, you can add a challenge there by having something like a pillow or a tilt board, something under your feet that kind of uh, takes away that easy information about where your body is in space. Um, and so I, I really like this little nifty diagram here. It's showing these special nerve nerves that are wrapped around the muscle fibers. And so depending on how long or short that muscle fiber is, that nerve that's wrapped around the fiber sends that information up to our brain to tell us, oh, the muscle is this stretched out or this um, contracted. And based on that, our brain extrapolates, okay, so we're here in space. Um, so that's sort of the snapshot of that system. And then our vestibular system um, is, again, a, a very complicated system. There are um, physical therapists who specialize entirely on like vestibular treatment. So with this, we have our canals, and this is located in our inner ear, kind of in, close to the cochlea, which is that curly component that you see there. Um, and so as fluid is flowing through these canals, depending on where our head is tilted, forward, backward, um, turning, that information about how the fluid flows through the canals, again, gives us information about where we are in space and how we're moving. And you can challenge that by, you know, maybe turning your head while you're working on an exercise. That can add another challenge component to the balance. And again, I, like I was saying, vestibular specialists, they, um, you know, go through a, a certification program to become specialists in this. Uh, they treat things like BPPV, which is benign proxi pro proximal positional vertigo, um, Meniere's disease, concussions, um, things like that that are going to be impacting our balance for one reason or another. And this diagram just shows in even more detail exactly how complex uh, this system is with the fluid flowing through um, what these are called hair cells. So on to our stepping strategies. So I'll have Sam come forward again. And with this, we're just going to start by having Sam practice stepping forward like so. Mm -hmm. And when you're at home, if you feel, you know, that you have a good enough amount of balance that you can start to practice these things, feel free. However, if you have struggle with this stepping strategy, I would really recommend that you have either someone with you or a chair, something like a counter, you can put a hand on something stable that's not going to move on you. Um, 
So if you're kind of not entirely stable on your feet and that even that stepping strategy is a little bit difficult for you, I highly recommend you have those um, at hand. If you're feeling good with that stepping strategy, you can kind of progress that by stepping backwards. <laughs> yeah, and so this we can quickly see where you know it starts to get challenging. And again, having someone there to monitor you, make sure that you're safe, absolutely help that. And then also, if we're working on something like this in the clinic, we would have a gait belt. Um, so Sam's just gonna kind of quickly show, show what that is. Um, it's a nice sturdy belt that will wrap around the patient make sure that it's snug. Uh, it has to be snug because, again, if you're falling, we don't want any slack on that belt because we're gonna catch you. Um, we're gonna have, you know, you're, you're gonna be well monitored when you're in the clinic with us, so you're nice and safe. So, so yeah, Sam is modeling the latest gate belt fashion. <laughs> um, so yeah. And, Another, another way to practice the stepping strategy is stepping to the side. So you can step left, you can step right. And again, getting comfortable utilizing this strategy so that it's not something you have to think about. It's something that you're, you have muscle memory with. Your body is familiar with that shift. Um, so basically when you're just standing still and stagnant, um, our base of support is pretty much gonna be right between our feet. Um, versus if we're shifting over to one side or the other, that you know our, our center of mass is, is moving away from being directly over our base of support. And so if we can get comfortable with that shift in you know any number of directions, because life is going to have that uh, effect on us, then that's going to prepare us for you know preventing falls. Another great way to practice this is with wall falls. So if you don't necessarily have someone with you to, who can monitor you, um, wall falls are a great option. So again, practicing that forward and backwards. This gentleman, you can see how with forward fall, he's only on one foot. That's a little more of a challenge than being on two feet. Uh, so you can kind of play with that. I would recommend starting with two feet, sort of leaning forward with your uh, hands braced against the wall and sort of see where that ankle strategy kind of reaches its limit. So if you're engaging that ankle strategy, you get forward far enough where you start to fall, then you're starting to know, okay, that's where my um, center of mass being outside of my base of support reaches its limit. Um, and then again, you can do the exact same thing with backwards as you, know, as you feel comfortable. And same thing side to side. And again, I would start with two feet. This picture is showing starting with you know, being on one foot, but I would start with two feet, work up to one foot and just kind of bracing gently with one hand. And so if we do happen to fall, um, these are gonna be some options for us. We have this method, and then we're gonna talk about another method after that. So Sam is gonna have a fall, but she knows how to get up. So we're gonna kind of be on, we'll say she's on her back, that she's falling on her back. We want her to roll sort of over onto her side and then push her arms, push against her arms to lift herself up to the side. And then she's gonna bring kind of one foot up in front of her, sort of in a kneeling position, like so. And then making sure that she's, you know, within enough distance of that chair to bring that knee up. And then pushing down through that foot, down through her hands, bringing herself into standing, carefully turning and, and coming back to seated position. Um, and so, of course, that is an ideal situation where you are close to the chair when you happen to fall. If you're not close to the chair when you fall, you might have to do a little bit of uh, sort of crawling on your hands and knees to get to the chair. Um, and then this other option, again, we're going to have Sam on the floor flat on her back. And it's a, a very similar uh, type of approach to begin with. She's going to roll over onto her side push herself up through her hands, and then she's gonna kind of pivot onto her butt so that she's sitting like kind of a long sit. And in this diagram, you can see um, this person maybe slipped out of their recliner. So for, for the purposes of that, we're going to um, assume that there's sort of a, a cushion or something in your environment that you can use to sort of um, prop yourself up on, sort of back yourself up onto to create kind of almost a step back up into the original chair. 
Um, we don't have that today, but Sam's gonna kind of demonstrate that pushing down through the arms, lifting herself back up into the chair. And then of course, with either of these methods, we're gonna wanna take a breath, um, catch, our, catch ourselves and um, kind of settle ourselves if we're sitting in the chair, because if you've just had a fall, that could be kind of nerve wracking. And then as soon as you're able to kind of rise from the chair, go get a phone, call someone, let them know that you've fallen. Um, Ideally, you'd have a phone maybe by the chair. All right. And so then here are some balance exercises that you might try on your own. And again, you know, having a chair by you, having a wall by you. Um, the first one is going to be this tandem stance. So having one foot in front of the other, kind of heel to toe. Um, and if you can't get your feet directly one in front of the other, it's okay to kind of stagger them and then gradually work on getting them into a line um, as you are able. And the first thing would be to just practice that stance. It, it can be harder than it looks. As you get comfortable with that, you might you know, feel you don't need the chair. If you're comfortable with that, you can work on tandem walking, which is another great one for sort of some movement component. Um, and walking on a line, which again can be a little harder than it might look. <laughs> So that's with sort of two feet on the ground, our tandem stance exercises. Progressing from there, we can work on single leg stance exercises. Again, we're gonna kind of come back to having the chair just to make sure that we're comfortable to start off with. And just pick whichever leg you wanna start with. Have one foot down, maybe hold that for 30 seconds, and then try switching to the other foot for 30 seconds. You might find that you have one leg where it's trickier than the other. Um, which is normal. Some, sometimes we have asymmetries in our bodies. So, you know, one hip might be a little weaker and that affects our balance. Um, and then actually going back to the tandem stance as well, the foot that's um, in the back typically takes a little bit more of the workload. So if you find that, oh, maybe the, the weak leg is the one that has the trouble being in the back. Um, so again, if you're feeling okay with that single leg stance, you can make it more complex. You can do sort of these clocks that we have on the, on the screen. So trying to tap to one and then out to two, mm -hmm. out to three, sort of making your way around that clock as best you are able. Um, and again, keeping in mind that it's all about practice and baby steps. Uh, if you're a little bit uncomfortable at first, that's totally normal. And I just want you to feel safe no matter what you're doing. Um, but at that same time, the balance will get better where we're kind of pushing the boundaries. If we're staying in our safe zone, those three systems of balance that we talked about aren't really gonna be challenged to grow and change um, and get stronger and better. So within reason, kind of going up to boundary, kind of playing there, and then when that starts to feel easy, pushing your boundary again. Um, with those plots, you can also incorporate with some cones. Um, so instead of being flat on the ground, having something you have to aim for, a little bit more of a challenge there. Balance really is all about just finding the things that are difficult for you and working on them. It's, it's practice makes perfect, truly. Really. Yeah, and you can do alternating tapping as well with one foot, then the other foot which that can be a lot harder than it looks actually. All right. And then next kind of introducing some more dynamic movements into the balance exercises, making it progressively ch more challenging. Um, we're introducing now an air X mat. And this for, for this exercise is just kind of so your knee doesn't hit the floor or anything like that. But it's just going to be sort of your basic lunge and then coming back up from the lunge. So with, with your center mass shifting over and that base of support shifting over, if we get comfortable with that and, and elongating our strides, that can be quite tricky. And especially if we have demands like that, you know, only ever so often, like maybe you're usually walking around a mall or your house or something where the ground is even, but then, you know, once in a blue moon, you go to a soccer game or something to watch your grandkids and maybe the grass is uneven or you have to step over a pothole or something. Um, 
So this, again, she's making it more challenging by going backwards. Um, so getting comfortable with having that longer stride is really great as well. And this next one, sort of a, a running man position. So bringing that knee up and then swinging back. So Sam kind of demonstrated that as well over the air X mat. Yep, perfect. And some more challenges for proprioception. So if you have something like a BOSU ball or like an AirX mat, you could also substitute for a pillow or maybe a folded towel. Um, it's not gonna be quite the same as an AirX mat, but it's gonna do, it's gonna start to do that job of um, differentiating that input for your proprioceptive um, system. Mm -hmm. And so again, starting with the chair, sort of easing off as you're able. You can also start with tandem stance here, working up to single leg stance. And again, this is a general guide. So if, if we're working with you in the clinic and there's a specific functional thing that you're struggling with, like some people struggle with um, stepping over um, like their shower, like their tub shower. So that can be something that people feel a little um, unstable with. Um, and so we try to address what the functional need is for that person when they come and see us in the clinic and really uh, pick apart what what's the problem that's that we're having so that we can make it transfer outside a clinic um, but again this is kind of that that basic balance guide and then i love to make it fun <laughs> i don't know if this looks fun to you guys but it looks fun to me um, so you can sort of have that air x mat as your base doing that single leg stance if that's starting to feel easy you can incorporate the ball <laughs> And you can do it forward, backward. You can do it side to side. You can fail like I do. <laughs> um, with patients sometimes, uh, you know, I'll start off being very direct with the ball. And then as they're getting better and better, I want to challenge them. So I'll try to go a little bit outside of their base of support, make them reach and maintain that, uh, that balance. And so I, I like doing that and I think it makes it, you know, engaging and fun. Um, there's other things too, like if you like yoga, that's something that you enjoy on a daily basis, whatever you're going to practice regularly, um, kind of make that a uh, component of your daily life so that it, it gets better and better all the time. Um, uh, being in the pool can also be a great way to work on balance. Um, over at TOI, we do have a pool. We love working on balance there. It's a very safe place to practice balance because if you fall, the worst thing that happens is you fall in three feet of water and you have, you know, Sam or I there with you. Um, so that's also a great way to work on it too. And then here we are with our assistive devices. And so I just want to talk very quickly about proper fitting for assistive devices. Because I, I see a lot of people who come into the clinic who are really hunched over or the device isn't being used appropriately. Um, so essentially with that, you want your cane or your walker, whatever it is, to be at the level of your wrist. Um, that's where you're going to want to fit it to. And so then when you're kind of putting your hand on top of it, it gives you just that slight angle at your elbow so you can effectively push down and stand nice and tall. You really want to be up and tall with your eyes looking out to your surroundings. The worst thing is if you're down here where you're, you're just staring at your feet and you're hunched over. We don't want that. And then proper gait patterns with use of a cane. Um, you're going to have the cane in the hand on the side of your good leg. And then you're going to bring that cane and the bad leg forward at the same time. So you're kind of putting pressure through that cane to take a little bit of weight off your, your involved leg, let's say. And then the good leg swings to or through, depending on your comfort level. With a walker, it's very similar. You're going to be standing with the walker in front of you, bring the walker forward. You're gonna bring the good leg forward, pushing down through that walker, and then bringing the involved leg forward so that it doesn't have to bear as much weight if there's pain or weakness there. And so, you know, as much as possible, I don't want anyone to be reliant on an assistive device, but I would rather that it, it is used if it's necessary. Uh, the worst thing is if, 
you know, people don't want to use the cane and then they have a fall. Um, and then, you know, unfortunately a fall can lead to a broken bone or a, a lot of other trouble than if we had just used the assistive device that we needed um, at, the, at the start. Um, also along these lines, uh, I want to talk real quick about footwear. Um, don't pay attention to my high heels. <laughs> um, in general, we want you know, footwear that has a nice base of support, especially if you're prone to rolling an ankle or something like that, a little bit more high ankle support um, based on your needs. Thing that has good um, arch support or insole um, so that we're nice and steady. Um, and especially if you tend to be a person that maybe wears out the inside or the outside of your shoe more quickly, um, be, be cognizant of that and checking the bottom of your shoe. So if you're noticing that wearing, that might be an indication that you tend to favor you know, some sort of compensation mechanism um, and then replace those shoes as necessary so you're on that nice flat surface for your walking because that's going to set the foundation for everything up your kinetic chain. And so in conclusion, please be safe. <laughs> Make sure that you have you know, someone with you or a, st a stable surface that you can rely on, not something that's going to roll away or fall away from you. Um, keep practicing even if you get a little frustrated so long as we're maintaining that safe practice. And then have fun with it because we're not going to want to practice something that we're not enjoying. So thank you for your time. Does anyone have any questions? Back to me here, in the inner ear. Mm -hmm. And actually here or feel a little bit Hmm. That is a very interesting question. I I would say probably not. Um, because the cochlea is the part of your ear that is going to be hearing things, um, and there shouldn't you shouldn't be able to hear that. No. So it's just water. I I won't say whether or not that's true, <laughs> um, but no, you shouldn't you shouldn't be hearing anything in those semicircular canals. Is there other parts of the brain that would with the inner ear? Um, so, so are you, are you, is your question that are there parts of the brain that are going to play into our balance? Yes. Definitely. Um, and so that's kind of where I um, was touching on with concussions. So when someone's had a concussion, maybe they have that coup, counter coup. So the brain is kind of sloshing around almost and hitting the front part of your skull and then it reverberates and hits down to the, the back part of your skull. Um, and this back part uh, of your brain is where your cerebellum resides. And that is a very crucial area for balance, uh, your sense of where you are in space. So even if you don't necessarily have um, something wrong with the inner ear, the brain has been damaged. It's, it will be maybe a little swollen, some inflammation from that injury. Um, so that absolutely can happen, and it does happen frequently. Okay. Just kind of go out of whack. Um, I don't know about that. The reason I'm asking you is that primary care, but I have the issue of falling backwards, mm -hmm. not able to stop. Mm -hmm. It's almost like I feel myself start to go, but I can't stop myself. You know, if I got something to grab, I might be able to just go ahead and fall. Mm -hmm. um, and you send me. And you said one particular area. I'm sorry, I don't remember. Mm -hmm. um, and so, is your question kind of that you know these these falls they can just kind of come out of nowhere and oh, yeah. yeah give out? That is somewhat common, unfortunately. Um, that when people have a fall, it's because they don't know that it's coming. It kind right. of catches them, you know, off guard. And you know, sometimes people are able to to think, oh, this tends to coincide with this. This is maybe a trigger for me. Um, but a lot of the time, unfortunately, it is just out of the blue. Um, and that's where something like an MRI is extremely helpful to sort of get a better idea of what's going on. My philosophy on things, this isn't everyone's philosophy, but I feel like you can't really know what you're treating unless you can see it, um, especially with the brain, because it's so complex. And there are things you just would never know are there unless you looked. Um, so I'm happy to hear that your doctor is 
you know, taking care of you in that regard. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Something that my comment said, is this similar to Simone Biles' twist, twisties? Mm. Your body is in space. Um, Simone Biles is probably got some amazing proprioceptive um, senses. And I'm not entirely familiar with what the twisties are. I thought that was more of a mental thing. Okay, so as I understand it from, from what we've seen in the news, because the twisties is obviously a pretty new term, um, it happens kind of specifically with gymnastics because they have to be so in tune with their bodies that they know they're not going to hurt themselves doing what they do. It's a level of focus that most of us don't ever have to tap into. Um, it's kind of similar in that when you have balance issues, your perception of where you are in space might not be completely accurate. So there can be a little bit of similarity there. That's a great question. Thank you for asking that. Any comments or concluding remarks from anyone? I wish we did. Um, this presentation will be on the YouTube and the Facebook. Yeah, so please feel free to reference it there. Yeah. And then, of course, you know, reach out to a physical therapist and see if there's something they can do to work one on one with you. I just finished my terminal rotation there as part of my program, and um, I'm currently researching. I am in Tucson with the Institute for the foreseeable future. Thank you guys very much. Thank you.